All right, in this video, I want to show you how you can use the C preprocessor to allow you to, at compile time, determine whether or not you want to get some extra debug type output to the console. So here I have a function or a program, and it has a loop where we increment y in this loop, and then we do some printing here. And if we compile this, and run it, we just see we get this output. So I can use the preprocessor, and it's very similar to the way that we have seen symbolic constants in the past. And before I do that, let me prefer to use four characters for indentation, and I just noticed that I had two. So in, in this first for loop, I can put an if def, and I'll call it debug. The name here doesn't matter. And then I'm going to print a, put a print statement. And I'll say, I'll write the standard error. So let me use fprintf. And I'll print what y is equal to. And critically, when I have an if def or an if not def, I need to put a corresponding in def. And what's going to happen with this code is if the debug flag is set, then this line will get compiled. Otherwise, it won't. So I can just do a define debug. I don't even need to give it a value. Just by doing this, it's going to be defined. And if I compile and run, notice I get this debug output. But if I take that out, then you'll notice it's gone. Now, that by itself isn't super helpful. We could just have an if statement that did the same thing. But I can actually, on the command line, define debug. So now when I run, you'll notice that I get my debug statements here. And when I don't run, or I don't set that flag and run, there's no flags there. And this is really helpful for if you have a large program. Sometimes you may want to see how the program's working. And so it's you can put these statements in to allow you to turn that output on and off. It might not be part of your actual output, but it might be helpful as you're running it just to make sure things are running the way you expect. And of course, you can also use a debugger to do this. We'll, we'll go through some debuggers later. But usually I find that printf statements work really well for finding bugs and also tracking the flow of a program. So this is one way to do it. The other thing I could do, actually, let me put a note at the top, use this dash D, define, debug, and that'll give you the correct logs. Okay, so another thing I can do, and this is even more powerful, and I would recommend, don't try to understand this yet. I think we'll get to this in the later in the semester, how this is working. But if I say if def debug, and I'm going to go ahead and just put the end def there just in case, because I don't want to forget. I'm going to define print debug, and it's going to take parameters. I'm going to define it to be fprintf to standard error format. And then and then if it's not defined, actually, let me just do it this way first. So now I'm going to put in a print debug statement. 
And I'm going to treat this just like any printf statement. So let me compile this. Or let me do the debug flag first, actually. So in line 14, I'm missing a semicolon. I didn't put the semicolon here, which I could, but that just creates some confusion. I, I think the code looks neater if I do it this because we're, we're maintaining C style syntax with this. And then I want to save my file. And when I run, notice this debug statement is there. This is the one that comes out from this print debug. And I'm going to use the dash E flag, which gives it, which just runs the preprocessor. Sorry, not, uh, it's not lowercase E, it's a capital E. Notice this spit, spits out the file. And you can see that we have this code here, where now here's my F printf statement. And here's the debug stuff we have, this this printf, this printf that's in the debug. But if I take off the debug flag and go with the e, e flag, notice there's just a blank right here. And this just says print debug. There's nothing else. So when I, when I compile without that flag, I get an undefined reference to print debug because it's not defined. Now remember, uh, just in case I didn't say this before, this dash E says run the C preprocessor and show me what that output will look like. And we'll do a lot of that in the next module because we'll talk a lot more about this, the preprocessor. So I want this to work without the debug flag. So I can put an else here. And there I'm just going to define print debug. And it'll be nothing so that when it sees this, if debug is not defined, this will just go away. So now when I compile, you'll see there's actually nothing there except for the semicolon, which shouldn't affect our operation at all. And it compiles and runs with no error. But if I do the debug flag, then it's going to give me all of that output. So this is helpful for cases like in this file, suppose I want to print some things and I want to see what's happening. I can put that here. And then I can also do it here to see what happens. So I can kind of use that to, whoops, have some bugs. 25. Oh, I left out what, I left out the variable there. So now you can see I'm getting a lot more output, but then if I, let's say I'm, I'm trying to find some particular bug, and then let's say that once I'm done, I can compile it without that, and there we go. I'm back to my original output. So this is just a way that you can get output and determine what gets printed from the command line, and you can have as many of these as you want. This is called conditional compilation. We'll talk about that uh, in the next module. But for now, this is sort of useful, especially with pointers and stuff. It's nice to do something like this. So as you're, as you're running and testing your code, you can just kind of make sure that everything's flowing the way you expect.